Our next presentation titled Premature Cellular Sensation, Sensation Appear Visible Without Crop Pause for Non Myroblative Transplantation in Adult Patient with Severe Sickle Cell Disease. Uh, uh, Dr. Musab Adamlet, working as a consultant in adult hematology and transplant and assistant professor in Claude uh, Benabilities, King Abdulaziz Medical City Ministry of National Guard, all the pair, Riyadh, Dr. Musab Adamlet, Dr. Musab um, thank you, Dr. Mohanad, and uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, the organizing uh, committee for choosing this uh, abstract for oral presentation, um, which essentially looked at the feasibility of stopping uh, serolimus early in the setting of allogeneic transplant in adults uh, with sickle cell disease. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, uh, can you please uh, put all of the bullet points in this uh, slide? So, uh, as you know, uh, allogeneic transplant uh, for adult patients with sickle cell disease is a curative treatment, uh, but the main limitation is that uh, it's associated with morbidity and mortality, especially if uh, conventional conditioning uh, protocols uh, are used. Uh, that being said, uh, over the last few years, um, uh, non myeloablative protocols have been developed and this permitted the use of allogeneic transplant in adult patients with sickle cell disease. Uh, in such platform, uh, serolimus is uh, commonly used for graft-versus-host uh, disease prophylaxis and it frequently results in a state of mixed chimerism where you have donor and recipient uh, cells um, post-transplant. Next slide, please. Now, um, this uh, is our experience with uh, transplant in adult patients with sickle cell disease. Uh, those were a total of 110 patients that were transplanted over a period of five years. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, event survival is estimated to be around 87% and an overall survival of 97%. Um, predominantly, all of the events that were observed, uh, whether it's uh, event-free survival or overall survival, were due to graft failure and uh, some of the patients that developed graft failure um, uh, had succumbed with uh, infections and bleeding, and uh, this has been the uh, only cause of uh, transplant failure. But as you can see, the results are overall quite excellent uh, in adult patients with severe sickle cell disease. Next slide, please. Um, this is also a shared experience from our center and uh, two other centers uh, in the U.S where um, uh, in included patients that were followed for a relatively long period of time because the main concern that we have with the use of a non-myeloablative regimen is graft rejection. So as you can see here, it's a cohort of 122 patients with the same protocol. Uh, the median follow-up was four years. Uh, we observed no cases of graft-versus-host disease of the chronic variant. And as you can see on the right-hand side, the myeloid chimerism um, hovers around 80 to 90 percent, whereas the lymphoid chimerism stays around 50 to 60 percent and in fact stays stable after stopping serolimus. And the median time on serolimus was somewhere around one and a half years or 489 days. Next slide, please. So the objectives of this study was to really examine uh, whether serolimus can be stopped early. Um, and early means um, when the uh, lymphoid chimerism is less than 50%. And the reason for that is uh, prolonged serolimus exposure is associated with some untoward toxicities and in addition to uh, it being uh, uh, preventative for, con for conception, and some patients, of course, uh, do not like that. Uh, specifically, we were looking at um, kinetics of lymphoid chimerism after serolimus is stopped. We were also looking at hemoglobin and hemoglobin S parameters, and of course, the incidence of graft loss, uh, which is the main objective of this analysis after stopping serolimus. Next slide, please. Uh, so this was an IRB approved study. We looked at adult patients that received allogeneic transplant for severe sickle cell disease over a five year span of time. Um, 12 uh, months of follow up was required um, because this is the period of time where we would start uh, tapering serolimus. The conditioning protocol uh, consisted essentially of alemtuzumab of a total of one milligram per kilo given over five days uh, and escalating doses as well as a TBI in one session of 300 centigrade. Uh, followed by a peripheral uh, blood stem cell infusion with a target dose of uh, more than 10 million if possible. Uh, serolimus generally is given for about a year um, and most of the time uh, longer than that. Um, and we measured uh, post-transplant chimerism at regular intervals, so at day 100, 180, and then annually. Next slide, please. So uh, a total of 110 patients over this time span under one transplant. Um, over uh, the, at the time of the data cutoff, 62 patients had discontinued serolimus, 
Um, 10 of them, in fact, had a graft failure uh, prior to stopping sirolimus. So uh, while they were go uh, actively on a GVHD prophylaxis, they um, unfortunately suffered graft loss and they were excluded from further analysis. The median time to graft loss in those patients was around 130 days with the range that you see. Um, the remaining 52 patients we looked at more carefully and uh, dissecting um, their CD3 chimerism at the time of serolium taper. So um, some patients had a more than 50% chimerism and they were deemed adequate, and this is the ideal setting. Uh, but we had two other groups of patients, one with less than 50% chimerism, but their chimerism was in fact stable and the patient had suffered some side effects from serolimus. So uh, the decision was to start tapering. And then a third group where we uh, in fact did not know uh, or had unknown uh, lymphoid chimerism, but we only had whole chimerism, which was again stable at 50% or more and the patient had suffered uh, side effects. Um, but in fact, this group uh, had uh, three patients that decided to stop serolimus on their own without physician uh, approval. Next slide, please. So these are the overall results. So we stratified uh, these uh, groups into the three cohorts, as you can see, and we looked at their baseline characteristics in terms of their age, um, gender, uh, pre-transplant characteristics, donor, ABO matching, et cetera. And generally they were the same. Uh, where we found a difference essentially was with the median uh, CD34 dose that was infused. Uh, so patients that had um, adequate uh, chim uh, lymphoid chimerism had a median of 12 million uh, CD34 dose um, uh, cells whereas it was uh, around 10 million for the other two groups. Um, the uh, CD3 or uh, a lympho um, uh, a lymphoid dose was essentially the same across the three groups. Next slide, please. Um, looking further into their uh, characteristics, uh, prior to taper, you see that the median hemoglobin, the median hemoglobin S, um, or the median hemoglobin was rather similar. Hemoglobin S was higher in the adequate uh, lymphoid chimerism group. And the reason for that is because of the higher proportion of um, sickle cell trait in this group. Um, otherwise, hemoglobin post-taper, whether it's hemoglobin, um, total hemoglobin or hemoglobin S was in fact uh, similar. Next slide, please. This is looking at the hemoglobin trend post-transplant uh, across the three groups. And uh, what is uh, interesting, um, as you recall, I told you before that the pre-transplant hemoglobin the median was around 9.5. And uh, what you're seeing here, essentially post-transplant, the hemoglobin rises into the normal range and it stays at this range post-transplant and it was essentially similar across the three groups. Next slide, please. Uh, we look at the, um, the chimerism. So you look at the lymphoid chimerism, uh, significantly higher in the adequate group as expected. Um, uh, the time uh, uh, to, uh, the, what's interesting though, is post uh, stopping serolimus, the lymphoid chimerism and the uh, myeloid chimerism essentially is the same, uh, as you can see in the middle, uh, hovering around mid, uh, mid to late, uh, mid to high 60%, uh, which was in fact quite uh, surprising. Um, but that being said, the time on serolimus therapy was significantly lower in the low and unknown adequate, uh, unknown uh, lymphoid chimerism groups. But most importantly, after stopping serolimus, we did not notice any cases of engraftment failure, and we did not have any cases of mortality, which essentially is the main finding of the study. Next slide, please. Uh, so the chimerism post-transplant um, in orange is the lymphoid and in blue is the myeloid. And you see we get results that are very similar uh, to what we would have expected otherwise. Next slide, please. Um, looking uh, specifically at the, at the groups that had adequate versus low um, uh, lymphoid chimerism, you see that the, their progress essentially is overlapping. And what is nice, in fact, is that after stopping the uh, serolimus in the low um, uh, lymphoid chimerism group, the chimerism continues to uh, increase and then it finally tends to plateau off after a reasonable follow-up time. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, it looked like uh, early stopping of serolimus in patients that had low but stable uh, lymphoid chimerism appeared feasible um, and without having any cases of declining chimerism or graft loss, which in fact was uh, quite um, interesting to see. Uh, next point, please. So uh, further evaluation, of course, is important uh, because of the side effects that we see uh, with the serolimus uh, treatment. And um, we think we are, in fact, in, in the phases of uh, planning this prospectively, particularly in patients that are more prone to serolimus toxicity, such as metabolic syndrome, et cetera. Next point. Uh, 
And of course, we're, we are interested in general for more long follow up of uh, this cohort in total uh, to see how stable is the graft function over time, regardless of the uh, lymphoid chimerism. Next slide. So uh, finally, I would like to acknowledge all of our members uh, from the multidisciplinary team, which have taken, a, of course, an important role in uh, making this uh, a success. And uh, importantly, uh, our patients and their caregivers for whom uh, all, uh, all of this essentially um, cannot happen. Thank you very much for your attention.